The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me now, and can you see my screen? So uh, if you could just type yes in the questions. Okay. Okay, so audio and video is good. Okay, I am sorry about the delay and I'm sorry about the uh, the issues here. Um, this has been, I've, I've heard about this and uh, we're just experiencing it, this, this for the first time here, uh, is uh, everyone's at home. Uh, so everyone's online and uh, uh, this is impacting bandwidth as well as GoToWebinar, okay? But uh, anyway, looks like uh, looks like we're all set here. Uh, so let me introduce uh, Futures Trader 71 very quickly, uh, and uh, and then also give the contact information for him, and then we'll we'll uh, give it right over to him and have him get started here. Okay, he's been trading for over 19 years, uh, high volume uh, equities trader, um, uh, and then transferred to futures 16 years ago, uh, uh, professionally uh, trading as a prop trader uh, from the beginning. He started his own prop shop until 2010. Uh, and then he decided to uh, direct his attention to uh, to online traders. Uh, he is known as a pioneer of volume profiling and breaking down the market behavior into statistical patterns as a way to read the market auction. Uh, he's currently a head trader and director at Convergen Trading, a virtual prop trading environment for career professional uh, traders. FT71 has been using Bookmap since its first release. So longtime user of Bookmap. Uh, I need to go through the risk disclaimer here. Trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. And here is FT's uh, uh, contact information, website, Twitter, YouTube, email, uh, and then special offers uh, from FT71 for Bookmap. Now, I'm going to paste all of these into the chat periodically throughout the webinar, so you don't need to copy these down. Uh, let's get started here, and let me turn it right over to FT71. All right, sound check, Bruce. Yes. Nice. Wow, <laughs> that, that took some perseverance. We shall overcome, as they say. Uh, hello, everyone. Wow, we're 25 minutes behind. Um, so I'm I'm gonna try to slam through this uh, real quick. Uh, my goal is to get you as much useful information as traders as possible. I appreciate that uh, Bruce has covered the risk disclaimer. A, a reminder that uh, derivative trading is not suitable for all investors. And where I'm covering statistics, which I will for a minute, Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results, okay? Um, so here's uh, here's what I'm going, you know, the topic today is uh, order flow and volatile markets. Using order flow and volatile markets requires quite a few adjustments. Today, you know, I'd intended to do a real-time trade. Uh, I don't know that something will set up here. Uh, so my best chance at that would be to look at scal a scalping approach. Uh, scalping is my was is where I was raised is how I was raised as a as a trader uh, from day one. I've been a scalper, and uh, but that's not how I trade currently. Uh, currently I trade structure and environments where structure doesn't really exist because of this uh, kind of crazy environment, historically volatile environment that we're in, uh, scalping becomes the uh, the fallback. So it's the easiest thing to cover. And of course, order flow lends itself to scalping. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about, so that's why I'm only going to cover scalping type setups. I'm not going to look at, you know, what I cover in my morning uh, daily live trader bites. Um, that are available on YouTube at 9 a.m. Eastern for anybody to to find. You can find those on YouTube.com and do, just do a search for Futures Trader 71. Subscribe to my channel and you'll get a notice before I launch the live uh, stream, the live video stream every morning. But so I'm not going to go over structure and you know what could set up because frankly I would just be making things up because this is not a normal trading environment. So I don't want to do that. Uh, the, the first thing I want to talk about is know your product. Um, 
in order to trade anything, really, I see a lot of people coming in, coming in and kind of diving headfirst into uh, into whatever product that seems popular at the time. Uh, Bruce, are the alerts that are coming off my computer are those kind of loud and distracting, or I don't hear them at all. Okay, uh, let's just keep saying new high Nasdaq, new high, whatever. Um, so uh, you have to become familiar with the product. Of course, uh, you know, I won't get into understanding the contract specs, um, the contract specs and all of that stuff. Um, I'm simply talking about the just the natural behavior of a product. And this is a key chart for me, and I'm going to focus on the ES today because it is the most popular product. This is a key chart. For me, if I'm learning to scalp or I'm, I'm moving into a new product, this is a key chart. This is what's called the fractal rotations chart. And what it's doing is it allows me to find out what the nature of rotations are. The market moves in rotations, right? It, uh, it cycles up to an area, find sellers, you know, because sellers will come in and stop the move up. Then it rotates to another area lower. It finds buyers and then it rotates back up and tests some area in between or the extreme depending on the type of market we have and so on and so forth. And each product, um, each product has its, its own kind of characteristic rotational uh, magnitude. And what this chart does is it says, okay, for the ES, if you're looking, let me get my markers here, this is, um, you know, my goal with this is to form a baseline for what we're about to do. You know, we're looking at the S&P minis, June contract, the ESM0 or ESM20, the bin size, meaning the size of every tick is 0 0.25. That is normal for the S&P. That's the smallest tick size. We're looking at 10 trading sessions back. We're looking at a one minute chart. It's the smallest size chart. Uh, that I can pull in for which data can be valid here. Looking at fractal bars of five bars. Uh, and so what it, what this means is the software will go and determine the, the peak by looking at the two bars before and the two bars after that peak. So it's constantly checking to see which is the highest bar of the two bars before it and the two bars after it. And then it sets that up as the peak of the rotation, okay? And then once it determines that peak, it figures out what the rotation was, what the rotational value was. So here, 57, it, it's an up rotation. So it puts a dot at 57 right down here. And then, you know, we move down 36. So it puts a dot for a down rotation for 36. So this is measuring the fractals up, the magnitude of the rotations up. This is measuring the magnitude of the rotations down. And by changing any of these settings, uh, I change the statistics that are involved. So this is all about breaking down the market data into statistics, okay? And so what is the bottom line here? The bottom line is that the ES on 10 sessions, remember this is extreme historic volatility, extreme historic volatility um, on 10 sessions back on one minute bars on five bar fractals, meaning five bars in the peak uh, that make up a peak, we have a histogram that gets created. There are 368 368 rotations that we're looking at because we're only looking at 10 days, 368 up rotations, 368 down rotations. So the sample size is, is pretty decent. So we have a, high, a relatively high confidence sample size. And what this is saying is the mode or the point of control or the most common rotation up for these parameters is 15 points. And as a just to bring you back to what the S and P normally is, uh, define normal, or com most commonly is that number. That figure is usually two and a half to three points. Two and a half to three points. Currently, it's 15, five times. Okay, so 
that's the most common rotation size in the S&P over the last 10 sessions, given the parameters above. And what is normal is anywhere between eight and 27 points up. Eight and 27 points up. That's, that's called the value area. That is also known as one sigma. Okay, that's the value area. This represents about 68.2% uh, of the data set. And that's statistically, we call that normal or the first sigma. Okay, so for up rotations, anything between eight and 27 points is normal these days, quite a big range. And then for down rotations, 13 points is most common and 25 to eight is quite normal. So we can extrapolate here and tell ourselves that somewhere in between 26 points uh, somewhere between the up and down rotations is the normal rotational value. And this, this, this value is actually very important because it determines, it's supposed to determine what our stop size is. We want our stop to fall outside of a normal rotation. We want our initial target um, on multiple contracts to fall inside of one normal rotation. Okay, and, and these values normally, historically, are somewhere between three and five points normally. Right now, we are trading five times the rotational value, which means we need to expand our stops five times. We need to expand our targets five times to keep the proper or a favorable risk factor. And I want to create that baseline before I start talking about scalping here. So what does that entail? It entails that in this kind of environment with this wide, I mean, gosh, 26 points is normally something we would cover in, a, in two trend days in a row. You know, that's 26 points with a minor pullback, 26 points. So two entire trading days in the ES, we're covering that in one rotation currently. Okay, and anything above 42 points is considered an impulse. And the impulses are kind of a bread and butter for me, bread and butter uh, trade for me. Uh, you know, when the market does an impulse, generally it has a continuation. We just had a minor impulse here uh, in the S&P as we broke through 24, 22, I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, and so the expectation is we are likely to pull back probably to 2,400. Uh, lean against this area right here, and then look for the continuation and aim for 34 for for 34 for 34 points uh, uh, as a target. Uh, so the first thing I want to I wanted to cover is that is these rotational values are extremely high, but it doesn't matter what they are, we still have to use them. We still have to deal with the market that is what it is. I'm gonna pause for a second and ask everybody. Does this make sense so far? Do, do, you get, do you get what I'm saying here? Uh, can you hear me? <laughs> Some of you can't hear me. Um, okay, so rotations, rotations, rotations. If you're trading without understanding the rotations in your time frame, then you're probably not sizing your trades right. You're probably not putting your... Uh, uh, sizing your, your, your stops correctly. You're probably not sizing your targets and scale outs correctly. It all starts with your time frame, and the time frame I've set up here is one minute. So it's a scalping or short term time frame. And within that time frame, I have to look for 26 point rotations as being normal with 15 being common. So with that baseline, we move on to the next thing. Sorry, it's a lot of clicks to get through things here in the software. So that's the historical volatil volatility and understanding the, the rotations. Historical volatility using the VIX, we're at the 99th percentile. In fact, we are approaching uh, all time high in terms of, uh, of volatility. So essentially uh, all bets are off in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, you know, here's my st statistical probability of this over that. Well, we don't have a statistical probability because 
we don't have we haven't had this market so we don't have a historical probability for what's going on and this is why i have to fall back on scalping uh as a as a kind of a a, a base thing to look at so let's look at leaning and testing an area I talked about this in the last pro trader series in september and that is pre-identifying the areas that I'm interested in doing business in. So these gray bands are stock zones. These are uh, created every day. Uh, they're created pre-market. They're actually created last night. Uh, and, and you can see here, I did not, you know, uh, every convergent member, um, those who are here and those who will listen to this, can attest to the fact that these come out before the market opens and you could see that the 2310 uh, stock zone, you know, given the, the amount of volatility kind of busts through, uh, 2310 stock zone is basically the bottom of the day. Then we cross through the mid, we push through, we push through the 2400 stock zone. This is a big area. And then we consolidated here. We pulled back to the mid, which uh, as many of you who've followed me for a while already know, this is a key area. We tested the mid and VWAP to almost within a couple points, which is basically a tick these days, the equivalent of a tick these days. Um, ticks are points these days. And then now we're breaking through and we're pushing into this key 24, uh, 39 area. And the expectation is that we would likely rotate down from here. So these are the areas, these stock zone areas, again published every day for convergent members uh on your book map uh, on uh investor rt on ninja and on sierra chart these uh levels are the areas we're looking to lean against this is these are areas although you know they're tricky these days because of the way the market moves these are areas where i'm expecting the market to to see a fight or to stall out okay and so these are the areas I generally lean against when I'm trading, when I'm trading day to day. These are the areas that I'm looking to engage the market in. These days, it tends to run through those areas by a little bit before it turns. The next one up is 2457, which takes us up to the 2460 overnight high. The overnight statistics still open. I'm expecting that 2460 to most likely be taken out. And then from there, we run up to 2484, 88, 2488 is the next key area up. So those that's those are the areas I'm going to lean against when I'm looking to scalp here. Okay. So those are the test areas. Now let's take a look at my book map. I use CT Bookmap. It contains um, you can get this at ctbookmap.pro. It's a white label version of the normal um, um, book map software with the addition of uh, an indicator called the scratch point indicator. And it gets, a, I have cloud notes on here. So the same gray areas that you saw here, oops, where did it go? One second. These same gray areas that you see on my trigger chart here are represented in the cloud notes on book map. Again, this allows me to just look at this screen and not have to refer back to my charts so much. So as we're looking at these areas, the ideal situation is when I see liquidity is firm in the market and it ties in with the predefined stock zone. So that 2460 is the overnight high. So it's likely to have, it's very much going to have uh, a, a pretty decent offer on there. 2450 has a pretty decent offer and is firm. In other words, it did not go from red or maroon uh, to dark blue to black as we're moving up. So that is firm, but again, that is a strike price. 2450 is a major strike. It's a mid-century figure. We see that the VPOC just shifted up to 24. 30 this is this line right here that's the the volume point of control um and we see that the the rotations are quite wide with very little in terms of liquidity because of the size that's being held up here uh there's very little internal liquidity that we can trade against so all i can go off of here is to lean against the size in the book 
uh, initially is I'm scalping, I'm leaning against the size of the book and I'm trading whatever the last rotation was. The way this works, and again, I'm sharing, I'm giving you the, the, uh, the goods here for scalping. The way this works is if I identify this as an impulse and it's an up rotation, it's got, it didn't have excellent delta here, it had delta coming in a little bit later. I'm charting delta here. Um, this I'm expecting to pull back to 50% or less, expecting it to pull back to around here. Then I'm going to look to, to get long on a scalp for a rotation and my initial target is going to be that last high. Second target is going to be the, the liquidity area, the high liquidity area, the target beyond that will be well ahead of the next high liquidity area. But because it breached that 50% area or this, this uh, high, then I'm not looking long anymore. Again, this is in the scalping time frame. This isn't in the big picture time frame. The big picture time frame supports the long side, especially with the overnight high still unbroken and that 98% historical probability remaining unbreached. I expect it to at some point push to 2460. But for right now, we have a market that is, um, that is you know, failing to hold this last impulse. There's not much for me to do here, and I'm not going to just spit out a trade just just because everybody's uh, you know make up a trade just because everybody's watching because I wouldn't be talking to you if I just made up trades uh, just to impress everybody. But uh, I need to wait for something to set up. So what could set up here? We're against this stock zone still. We've pushed through. We've pushed through the prior day's high. We've tested, so we pushed through the prior day's high and we can see sellers came back in. That's the narrative. We're inside of the prior day's range. We're above the IB. The IB is at 24, 22, 75. And so for me to fade, uh, it would have to be very, very short term. For me to get long, I need a nice push, a nice impulse up on pretty good delta, and I would trade the pullback of that looking for a continuation. The market appears to be flagging up here, you can see this more clearly in my trigger chart. You can see the it's flagging right here. Let me turn off these zigzags. So you can see it's flagging. It's pushed up, nice little impulse there. And it's kind of sitting here flagging. So it's consolidating, it's compressing. I need to see which way it sorts itself out. Uh, as of right now, there's no real edge uh, in in the short direction or in the long direction. The long direction has a structural edge, meaning a longer term edge, you know, 10, 15 minute uh, time frame. Uh, the short term has no real edge. You can see the size is simply following the book. These are algos just following the book. And the size is coming in once the area has been tested, which tells me that it's probably not firm. It's probably not gonna stay there. The size that matters and this is where book map, you know, is is just this is why as soon as I was shown book map in 2014, I was like, oh my God, I wish I had this for my um prop shop because the the importance of size is not that it's sitting in the dome because a lot of it's fake. The importance of size is when it's firm, when it sits there as the market approaches. So you can see 2415 building some size here down below. What I'd want to see to lean against that size is as the market goes down, I would want to see that go from orange to dark orange to red to maroon. In other words, I want to see it firm up rather than back off, um, rather than back off as the market moves to it. So see the size stepping in here right after the pop through? It may stick around, it may not, but that's not something I can lean on. Okay, one of the things I wanted to show as well is once we're in, we're not done. Um, you know, the, the goal because of the very, very wide, remember the rotational statistics for a one minute chart on the S&P are very wide, 26 points is a normal rotation, anywhere between eight and 26, 15 being most common. It means that I have to actually break these trades up. 
So I'm down to one lots. But the goal is not to trade one lots. Of course, I encourage everyone to just do this in the micros, but you know, I can't rely on the volume in the micros. And this is where uh, cross instrument trading is, is really key in, in book map. So here, look, it just traded that size that was sitting here. Somebody actually took that size in. So it's time to start looking at pushing the long side here. Uh, it's running away. Time to look at pushing the long side. The IB is holding. So we're going to put out an exit there. Compressing the point of control is shifted up here. We're in the point of control area. Sounds like President Trump is talking. I'm getting that over CT News. We're kind of in a chop zone here. Looks like the delta is falling a little bit. The underlying sectors are actually relatively strong. I'm stalking along still, looking for a 4650 initial exit, but not seeing an opportunity to get in here. So retest of the 35 area. Caution, the president speaking. So this is only a partial position. Remember, this could be 15 points wide, right? All the way down to 20. I'm looking for an impulse pullback to add. Underlying sector is relatively strong. So where 15 points is really just the most common rotation. We're within tolerance 26 points deep, okay? So my scratch points, 2435, it's a single lot, so that, and I haven't taken anything off, so the scratch point stays the same. So here we're pushing to 2275, the IB high.
Trading is a lot of patience. The problem with adding too close is I'm not improving my average, so there's no point in adding a 2430 to only five points. Remember, the most common rotation is 15, so I might as well just get into two lots right out right off the bat. I have a question on that um, FT. So, mm -hmm. um, would you, if you saw that conditions dramatically improved, even though the, your um, it would be averaging in at the same area, uh, but the order flow looks much better. Would you do that? Uh, I just don't know what that looks like in real time. I can only see that after the fact. So right here, like it's just above my average, has have conditions improved? To me, what do how do conditions improve? Conditions improve as I see that I'm getting up rotations on higher CVD, on higher delta, and by that, time it's already run off and so what happens is let's say from here from 33 ish we have an impulse up then I'll trade the pullback and if the pullback happens to be at 35 that's okay uh, but I'm not going to add just because it kind of fluttered up like it did from here to here this looks like oh my god it's taking off let me add but then I would end up with basically twice the risk for no improvement uh, and I don't want to do that. I want to create an asymmetric risk environment. So that's why I have to count in that I need to space my, my if I'm campaigning in or averaging in, I have to space it wide enough that I have an ad advantage on the average. So if I add 15 points lower uh, with another one lot, my, I have improved my average seven and a half points. Again, this is not like averaging down. Uh, I'm not averaging down. I'm. This is a planned campaign. This isn't a trade going bad, and I just want to add to it. Okay, so there's a big difference there. So I need to have an, a kind of a mathematical advantage to be able to add or to campaign. Otherwise, uh, it's really just me being random. I'm still aiming for the same thing. I'm still trading with the overall trend of the market, which is the bias is up. We broke the IB high. We still have the overnight high. Uh, open as a, as a high probability historical stat statistic. It's just a matter of how much heat do I want to take or how do I manage, how do I want to manage uh, getting into a trade at an advantageous enough price to to catch that run when it happens. It's just, you know, and it may not happen. It may end up breaking. And for me, from 35, if it breaks below 25 points, this is wrong. Uh, so anything below 24.10, which would, puts us well below the IB high, which is a 22, I am wrong, and I'm just going to exit the trade. I could put that exit, the stop in now, but I don't need to at the moment. I'm still stuck. In, this is well, well within tolerance here. And so my goal is to assess what are the up rotations uh, doing? You know, how much room are they getting? You can see the up rotations are getting a little more room than the down rotations uh, right now in the immediate past. So this is favorable. But if I get an impulse down, like it just shoots straight down um, and then has a weak uh, increase, a uh, weak uh, rotation up, I go from wanting to add to wanting to close. Uh, so it's just a function of what it does. I have to stay in real time and kind of trade the market and what it delivers versus just kind of wanting to add to a trade just for the sake of doing something. Um, so, but it's important that my ad gives me a price advantage. Otherwise, I might as well just get in with two lots right off the get-go, right? And why is it two lots? It's two lots because the normal rotation is 26 points. So, you know, on this trade, there's a 52 point risk on just two contracts, 52 points on just two contracts. That's, that's a lot of money. 
it's 2,500 bucks, right? 2,600 bucks on just two contracts. So trading big uh, makes no sense in this market. In fact, trading micros is even better. So here's the addition area. So this is the area I would look for it to hold right here at the IB. I'm gonna look for how does it respond here? Looking for weakness. What am I shopping for here? I'm looking for as it moves down, it is struggling to get more uh, lower prices for the amount of uh, delta or the amount of hitting that it's doing. So as it hits the bid, it's not able to move lower. See, this is slicing lower very easily and very quickly. One second. Number 2410 and below, I'm wrong. There's my ad. Now my scratch points 24, 20, 25, 88. My stop is right here. So if it rotates up from here, I'm in good shape. I've got a pretty good price advantage on the two lots. My average is, as it says, the scratch point is 24, 25, 88. So if I wanted to scratch this trade, I can put an offer out here at 24, 25, or 26, and I would scratch the trade, but that's not, not here to scratch the trade. I'm here to get my 46s and 60s. But you see how it's pushing, but it's not making any real headway here? That's why I lifted, but this may be wrong. Okay, it is approaching the wrong area here. So getting back up to 26 from here or to my initial entry of 35 is one rotation. It could take a minute for it to go right back up there. So let's just keep that in mind. It's taken a long time for it to come down here. So this is still, still viable. Yesterday's close is at 2,400, but I'm wrong right below here. If it starts to slip through this area right here, then I'm wrong and I'm flattening and just allowing myself to be open to the next trade. This is a little bear flag here. I had planned on two lots only, but if I had a third, this would be the area I would add the third. Nope. Not sure what was said by President Trump here, but the market doesn't like it. Nothing to do but wait.
Yeah, so this is an impulse continuation trade here. I'm out. So zero, sold those. This is a loss. So it's uh, 26 from 26 to 04, so 22 points times two. So things have changed here. So you can see that this has turned into kind of a, an impulse down or short term or small impulse down. Let's, and then what we saw in this little pop that looked like it might make its way back, what we saw here is a pullback and this is a continuation back to the prior day's close to the tick. This is a, this is a potential bounce area but overall this trade did not uh, work. This may be a bounce area here, which could set up another long, but uh, overall that trade with the best, best possible effort given the information we had at the time did not, uh, did not come to fruition. But that's how I'm campaigning into positions because of these wide rotations rather than taking two contracts and holding for 26, 27 points of a stop uh, I'm doing one and one because of the wide volatility. And sometimes it takes one and goes and fills your exit. And it is what it is. It's too bad. Uh, but my, my first priority is to manage the risk of, uh, of the trade rather than to maximize profit. At the, moment. Uh, the profits kind of take care of themselves if I can take care of the risk. So here it's consolidating. This is a pretty decent area here potentially for, for buyers to step in. We're not seeing buyers. You can see the CVD going negative, uh, turning turning orange here, which means that there's just a whole lot more hitting on the bid than lifting on the offer. Uh, see some liquidity at 94, uh, but overall, uh, I would be looking for the short side now. Now that it's inside of the IB on this big rotation down, uh, there's no sense in getting long at all at the moment. Bruce, uh, if there are any questions I did not address, let's uh, take care of those. Obviously, not the best, uh, not the best outcome, but it is. Unfortunately, that's trading. It's uh, you, you win some, you lose some. Uh, a question on um, the uh, so the volatility. So, um, if you get in with one and it goes your direction, uh, and like you you went through the scenario. Uh, if uh, you get a you know a massive move to the upside, you, you're you know you'll you'll be taking profit on one, and then you'll be looking for a pullback for for entering it on another, or would you you would be entering on um, two before taking profit? So I'm looking to enter on two before I take a profit, and again the reason it's two is because on the ES that essentially is about twenty two hundred to $2,500 per trade. It's a lot. Don't care how big your account is, that's a lot. Um, so my preference is not to trade, I don't like trading one lots. My preference is to trade more than two, more like 24, <laughs> but this environment is such that I have to respect the risk. So the, the goal here is let's say I got in over here and it's a long, right? So triangle up for a long. Uh, the goal is to have it flutter around, push up, come back higher, consolidate, and give me another opportunity to add to that for my ultimate target way up here. That's the goal. Or it flutters around, pushes lower, but well within a cycle, consolidates, and gives me an opportunity to get in to the second at a better price, which is what I just tried here in front of you. And then it starts to rotate towards the initial target. So we take one off. And so the average, the scratch point goes from here to here. And then once I take this profit off, so we have a selling triangle up here, what happens is as we take the profit off of the one up here, depending on how far this is, all of a sudden my scratch point drops to there. So now my scratch point is below my second entry. The market is up here. It consolidates, it does its thing. And then I'm looking to add some more, bringing the scratch point 
back up to here, and so on, until it finally reaches that 2460, which I expect it would by the end of the session. And that's how I would campaign. It's, I'm con I can add in favor, or I can add when it's going, when I'm taking heat, as long as it's within that rotational value, and as long as I have a predefined area to add uh, on the way down. In other words, the zipper from the past, or some size to lean against, plus a reference point, things like that. And that's just for scalping. Uh, my goal is to be in two, take one off, not at scratch. I don't, I'm not interested in entering a trade, adding and getting out for one at scratch. Uh, this means that I'm willing to take a whole lot of risk for zero upside. That's, that there's no way I can have a career doing that. Um, but my goal is to get into two and, and, and get out for one rotation on my initial. So I'm improving my position by 26 points, uh, my scratch point by 26 points. And then now I can sit easy because the scratch points way down here. The, the contract I'm holding is from way up here and I can just let the trade kind of do its thing and it can sit and run for 100 points in this environment. Uh, and it wouldn't phase me to hold that one lot. My goal, however, is to constantly add and take away from the trade as it's moving up, to campaign around it. That's what I hope to demonstrate today, but um, the, uh, the odds are not with me. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, so basically, I mean, you, and you're just doing that all day long. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it, uh, on the first initial um, entry, uh, it can can it just be within that range or ever, or are you looking at the extreme? Uh, it it has to be within the range, but it it cannot be uh, less than half a. So I went through those stats. I said the most common rotation is 15 points. So the earliest I would add is approximately seven to eight points. So here I went 35 and I went 26, that's nine points, right? So uh, actually, you know, I went even deeper. I went to 16, 35 to 16. So that's about almost 20 points, um, 19 points. And the goal is to get that scratch point indicator to get my scratch point line or my break even line to come with me as deep as possible. Uh, as long as it stays within the parameters of that 26 point rotation and it stays kind of, it hasn't done anything to breach uh, the, the upward bias, then I'm going to stick with the trade. It takes a lot of patience and a lot of discipline to kind of do that in this wide of a tr market. But the goal is to get an advantage. And then as soon as it starts to rotate and it moves it back up to where I wanted to target up here at 46, 46 half, if I had gotten a 46 half on one of these, then I would have improved my position. The difference between 26 and 46, this scratch point indicator would have dropped 20 points from where it was. So it would have been 20, uh, it would have gone from 26 to 06 while I hold that one lot. At 06, with my second entry at 16, I'm basically uh, 10 points better than my second entry. So I only have 10 points of risk with approximately, at that point, um, 25 points of gain. So good risk reward ratio. So a couple of, I know it's like drinking out of a fire hose, what I'm saying here, but there's a couple things in play. One, identify the bias, understand the rotational value of the product in the time frame that we're in. Then uh, once we see that the bias is, say, long, we're looking for many different clues to, to trigger a trade, and that is, you know, look at the heat map for size that is remaining in place, um, things like that, a predefined um, area to lean against, and so on. Uh, and then we, we manage the trade by looking at, okay, how is it rotating at that point? Does it take off as soon as we go in? If it takes off as soon as we go in, it's likely to pull back. It's, as it's pulling back, is it selling? Is it, is it really struggling to gain prices on the way down, to push prices on the way down? If it is, then I'm looking for it to pause, lift again, 
to add my second and then let it rotate to that last peak, scale out at the last peak, um, and then let it run, pull back, watch to see that it's not easily dropping if I'm long. When I'm long, I want it to easily push up and struggle to pull down. Easily pushing up, struggle to pull down. What it did just now is it kind of struggled to push lower, but then it slipped through. In this area right here, it slipped through pretty easily. That's not good, but then it struggled to push through once it got here. So to me, it looked like it was exhausted on the on the sell side. And that's the reason I added the second. So from here, I expect it to rotate up fairly quickly, uh, rotate up fairly quickly, and then have a hard time pulling back uh, and then continue higher. My timing was not great uh, as it coincided with President Trump speaking and uh, Senate Majority Leader speaking, as well as the President of France speaking. <laughs> Uh, and they have nothing good to say. So this is, you know, the market's kind of responding in a panicked way as to where it goes. Right now, it's bre it's testing up against the VWAP. You can see that here. We're pushing up against VWAP, and we have essentially eliminated short term on a scalping basis. We've eliminated the the long that I was looking at, but it may be setting up for an additional long here. Why the long? because we're still above the open, we're still above yesterday's point of control, we have breached the IB high, the first hour's high, we still have the IB, the overnight stat above us, and this is a pullback, high or low still. These are all components that tell me that the bias overall is to the long side despite this drop. So this drop is more of a pullback than it is a market that is just no longer at this point. Uh, it's more a pullback than a market that is no longer able. So here, this would set me up for a long right here, 23.90, right here in this area. This is a, a long setup. See, it, it races down, pulls back, then it takes out the last low by just a little bit. So here we have a struggle to push lower. So I'm expecting it to push to 05 here. So watch. This is likely to continue to 05 because it easily pushed through the size here, and then it just stalled out. We have a nice collision, pull back. Then it is able to only muster out, eke out a small new low, and then it bounces back up. So here I'm looking for a potential long into 05 for 12 points. And the risk on that would be 83.82. And do anyway, you, do, do you I, always keep with the um, with the strategy, strategy, or uh, is there any sort of deviation from it where you may um, just uh, get out at break even? Uh, I only get out on break even if I see that an adverse move has occurred. So let's say I'm long. Let's say I'm long the ninety here, and the trade actually goes my way and we have a nice push up to 24.10, 24.15, and then it immediately explodes downwards. In other words, it just has absolutely no mercy to anybody that's in its way. It's it's ripping right through the bids. I scratch those. Something's up, news, some, some new thing has come up here. Again, it's failing to retain these higher prices. Um, that's when I would scratch. Otherwise, I'm just going to let the trade do its job. Like if I'm interfering with a trade, meaning I plan out a trade, I take the risk, and all of a sudden, you know, the market goes back to my scratch because I took a little bit of heat and I scratch it, then what is that going to look like over a thousand sample of trades? Over a thousand trades, that's just going to look like I paid my broker, the exchange, the clearing firm, and I never paid myself. So I'm taking the risk with no with no possible uh, upside and that's just not a sustainable career um, here it just took out the last low here and it's pushing through size this is this is uh, pretty much failing the last frontier is 76 here the mid of the session 76 in this stock zone area 
Um, so to answer your question, I, I, I don't scratch trades unless something dramatically changes. Like it's just, you know, it's making good progress. I'm long, it's making good progress and it just explodes back down. That tells me that something's up and I'm expecting my news feed to, to tell me that some, somebody said something somewhere or something has happened. It should not do that. Uh, if the market's in my favor, it should slide up fairly easily and pull back, even if it pulls back deep, it should struggle to pull back because there are traders supporting it, uh, buying it on the way back. And if it isn't, if it suddenly turns around and goes fast, it tells me that something's changed, something's not in my favor, and that's when I close the trade. Otherwise, I, I have to, as a trader, I, I'm in the business of, of letting the trades do their work. Uh, I have to let the trade kind of do its job. Uh, I'm not going to interfere with it. Uh, you know, uh, doing that just introduces randomness uh, to the overall outcome. If your if your trade plan says something, and all of a sudden we're constantly intervening, then you're no longer trading your trade plan. And if you're not trading your trade plan, there's, in my opinion, zero chance of success trading. It's your trade plan that makes money. It's not my ideas while I'm in a trade or my view of how things are going to play out while I'm in a trade. That's not, that's not what's, what's going to help me succeed in trading. What helps me succeed is my trading plan and I have to follow it. Okay. Um, FT, do you have a, 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 a few more minutes for a couple of questions or? Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Colton is asking here, um, so when vol volatility picks up uh, as it has recently, you simply throw out volume, volume profile levels in the short term and use longer term composite levels. Is there a, a best way to use composite uh, for entries, exits in high volatility or are you simply picking liquidity levels and scalping the range only? Uh, I do both. So what he's talking about here is, <clears throat> so every day has its own profile. So that's the profile. This this chart here is a 15 minute chart of the uh, day session only or RTH session. And each chart, each day has its own profile. And each profile creates its own character or characteristics of what that auction is doing. To the right, right here, is the the composite this black uh this black chart here is basically all of the volume at those prices going back to 2015 august 24th to 2015 the last major swing low i'm looking on a normal day i'm looking at the day profile because in general it's the the day or the intermediate time frame that trader the participant is in control. And so we get respect of the IB, we get respect of the mid, the VWAP, uh, the open, the prior high, low, close. Those are all day time frame levels. Uh, on some days when there's a little more aggression, I have to look at what's called a micro composite. A micro composite is a mix or a blend of a bunch of days that are in, um, in balance. So this yellow profile here is a micro composite. In fact, this micro composite should extend out. So what this is doing is it's saying, okay, let's take a look at what's happened over these last few days because the market is testing up, testing down, testing up. Let's see where the volume is on that profile. So I've, I've had to use micro composites a lot more. But to be honest with you, the time frame that's really playing here is much, much higher. These are, um, you know, big, big long-term uh, time frame players, it seems. And so I'm leaning against the composite, which is the kind of mother of all volume profiles, because it's picking up everything to the left of it. And this is where yesterday's bottom at 2280, I came up with that price at 2280, as the key target below, if it's sold off, it's because you can see very clearly that there's a lot of volume at that price, 2280. So the market came down here, right to it, 282, bounced back up, pushed through to 62, bounced back up, came back above the 80, and then exploded upwards on the close. And so I'm paying attention to these big areas, uh, 
for example, below 47, thin area below 47, if we fall below 47, my expectation for today, if we get below 47, is it's likely to push to 23.10 relatively easily. Where do I get that from? I get it from the composite. I get it from what has happened in the day before. So I'm leaning on the composites a lot more than I normally would. Uh, Pre-February, I didn't look at the composite much at all. It didn't really matter. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, Peter's asking, um, uh, did you not say that bigger liquidity areas are mostly um, uh, take profit orders? Um, uh, bigger players going into the market with market orders? I guess bigger players uh, pushing into those mar uh, with market orders into those areas. That's true. I don't think they are pushing. I think that I believe that, you know, and I've seen this in the pit even. I believe that when you have high liquidity, like uh, one price that, that's doing that right now is 2460. So if I go up to 2460, they've actually improved the scrolling on Bookmap. I uh, just released a version today that improves the scrolling here, but I haven't installed it yet. But if we look at 2460, see the size there, 605, 2450, 545. This is what I mean, 2460 is the overnight high. If I'm long, if I'm long, I probably entered on a market order, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm holding on if I'm long, but, most people don't exit on market orders. Most people exit on pre-designated areas. Like I get in on a market order in general, but I put out my orders to exit. I put them in a the book and those show up on the heat map. And so when I see 24.6, which is a prior high, it tells me that a whole lot of participants, because this level comes from the Globex session, a whole lot of participants are wanting to get out at the overnight high, right at the overnight high. And generally what that means is, generally smart money is already positioned to take profit in those areas. And so the old saying is the market moves towards liquidity, liquidity being uh, limit offers or limit bids resting in the book. But why? The market doesn't just decides I'm gonna to move towards liquidity. I believe what's happening is the smart money is offering that liquidity because they, through their positioning, their, their, their bias is such that we will likely end up at that liquidity because that's where we're lo they're looking to exit. And so we get to see where that is. But their entries are generally governed by icebergs, um, you know, market orders, things like that. So yes, the market tends to move towards liquidity. Those are generally exit areas for others, higher time frame traders, swingers, investors, and whatnot, potentially. I don't know. This is me just having observed order flow for 19, 20 years, 20 years this year. Um, it, it tends to kind of move towards that, but that's because the, the, the Somebody is getting out at those areas. You know, it, they're hoping, and you'll see it in Bookmap a lot. You'll see liquidity resting there. You'll see the market nibble on it and start to move up. And then you'll see the liquidity kind of chase, chase as the market's moving up. It's chasing the market because it doesn't want to risk the market having, uh, having enough liquidity that it scares away uh, the participants from getting their fill. So they just lift the market and help kind of move the market up. Um, but that's not how I'm using it for scalping. For scalping, I'm just leaning against that liquidity for a small bounce. I'm only looking for a rotation when I'm scalping. In this case, I'm looking for 15 points on a scalp, right? Crazy to say that because that's a whole day's range normally. But, um, but you know, for now, the time frame is so short, it doesn't matter what that liquidity is trying to do. All that matters is, will it be there when the market moves to it? so that I can take advantage of a potential bounce, or if it nibbles through and it bounces and it starts to aggressively move down, can I hit the bid and, and participate in the break of that liquidity and, and the stops that are resting beneath it? 
order flow trading is complex because it's a lot of if then else if then else statements kind of bound together and this is why it has to be shown kind of in real time uh, to understand what's going on and, and you have to observe it for a long period of time because there's a story that it's saying here okay okay um i think that's just about it um so uh I'm uh, sorry about the uh, delays, uh, everybody. Uh, looks like most of you guys got in and uh, and had um, uh, <laughs> you know access here, and and a few guys I guess didn't have uh, audio, but uh, um, okay. I, I, I've put in the into the chat um, I, all your contact info, uh, FT, uh, as well as your uh, special offers for Bookmap if people are interested in that, uh, and uh, anything else that uh, in parting words you want to go over. Uh, I just want to make sure that folks, you know, we talk about order flow a fair amount at Convergent. You know, I've been working on Convergent for about two years, building a community. It's really important for me to have high quality traders and very, very serious traders as part of this community. We created a special offer for uh, this webinar. This webinar did not occur before we came out of beta where we raised our prices on March 1st. However, uh, until the until next week, uh, until next week, uh, we created this special page. It's at go to ct.pro. Uh, it's in front of you on the screen forward slash bookmap deal. Uh, we created this uh, so that those people who just who've just learned about uh, convergent can join at the grandfathered pricing at the beta pricing. Uh, that deals just we're only doing this for bookmap and that deal is just going to go away uh, in about a week. Uh, so we wanted to extend that out, extend that to everybody that uh, wants to wants to uh, join. Uh, you can take a month and decide that it's not for you or whatever, uh, but hopefully you'll stick around. We're looking to build a bigger and bigger group of traders. Um, if you have questions for me, just go to convergenttrading.com forward slash contact and just refer to me uh, in your question and your ticket will be passed on to me. I'll do my best to, to respond. Hopefully I didn't confuse you today. The trade long obviously did not work, but that's just the business of trading. There's gonna be a lot of trades that just do not work and do not uh, agree with my uh, bias in the time frame I'm looking at it. That's all I have for you. Okay, well, I, I copied and pasted also that link there um, that you're uh, presenting there, The um, uh, go to CT uh, Pro uh, link is in the chat as well. So if you guys can click on that, and it should work for you. Uh, so uh, uh, yeah. So I, I think uh, I think that's it. Um, uh, thank you very much, uh, FT. Um, really, uh, really great stuff to see how uh, y you're spacing it out and reacting to uh, uh, volatility with uh, with your trading and uh, um, uh, your data in your plan. This is, it's really important to recognize, for everybody to recognize that this is a very, 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 very unusual market. This is historic in its behavior and trying to use order flow uh, in this sort of volatility is quite tricky. So if I was trying to learn order flow in this environment, I would be mostly a spectator. I would be watching uh, a lot more than actually trading because uh, there are some big hands that are coming into the market and pushing uh, asset prices around and you, you just need to be aware that the normal rules or the normal flow that comes with order flow is not in effect. So we have to spread, we have to trade a lot smaller and we have to spread things out quite a bit um, in order to achieve the same kind of uh, goal as, as uh, the same kind of results as we would have in a normal environment. So just be aware that there's a tremendous amount of risk uh, as well as opportunity with higher volatility, but the volatility levels we're on as we're doing this webinar are really incredibly high. So just be careful. I'd rather see you be a spectator and be here when things calm down so you can take advantage and trade the market uh, than to have you dive in um, into the heat map and kind of do whatever uh, and end up losing uh, your chance to uh, be a trader. Anyway, thanks for having me on. Uh, Bruce, I appreciate the invitation by Bookmap. Hopefully you guys gained something today. Good luck, and I'll catch you next time. Take care.